as a paranoid schizophrenic my grandmother was delusional she would uh, she was very scared that uh, she was being poisoned so initial initial levels bouts was about uh, you know maids and ayas and nurses and things like that and uh, she would refuse to take care uh, uh, receive care from uh, most of the hired professional help and when all of them were uh, therefore sacked and my mother took on the role directly herself uh, then it moved towards uh, my mother the fear the accusations that you're trying to kill me uh, for my property or for the money and it would also extend to my father and etc and that for my mother was very difficult so on the one hand that my mother is losing her sanity uh, was one part of it yeah but but she's still your mother yeah and the emotional toll on what that means i think was largely unrecognized i would be very very angry at the time because uh, in order to cope with the absurdity of the whole situation uh, i think people made fun of it or or laughed about it you know in saying that oh you know what she said yesterday or you know what she said the other day the doctors and the physicians never advised uh, professional help i mean the physician who was treating treating her almost said you know a boy she are ki kar raha hai so i said like she's so old i mean there's nothing you can do my uh, uncle was in germany my uh, masi was in delhi and they pretty much took it for granted that uh, since you're the daughter who's living in town you will take care of uh, my parents uh, they would come once in six months once in a year my masi my mama uh, my uncle would come even less but while it may not have been gratitude i didn't see compassion I don't think they even had any clue and not because they were bad people they just didn't do it for themselves either so my aunt may have gone through her shit in her own context with her own husband and her own in-laws and etc so she she saw that this is caregiving is what a woman does whether it is for your father or your mother or for your in-laws and uh, what's the big deal about it? born in the 70s and grew, grew, growing up in the 80s um, i think i saw the dregs of uh, what we often refer to as community i i think it had already started withering and what we were seeing were the rots of uh, community living so there was envy there was competitiveness there was but at the end of the day people were all fragmented and isolated in their little worlds so if something happens to your life uh which is uh, unfortunate uh, there are three things that come to my mind one thank god i'm not in his shoes uh second is poor thing uh third is maybe uh, you know he did something to deserve it um uh, and then associated humor or you know uh, sympathy or pity or whatever may be, may be associated with it having to come in and talk about caregiving and talk about caregiver's trauma or talk about the need for self care etc etc is largely a reaction to a culture which takes caregiving for granted caregiving for the young caregiving for the old and as feminism has grown in india and in the rest of the world uh, the currency of empowerment has been getting into professional work meaning management um, you know creative arts and and things like that and caregiving has been now contracted to hired help uh, so nobody says that as a woman or as a man uh, my route to empowerment is caregiving yeah people would say that uh, everybody for, for for everybody the expression of one's identity is um, through one's professional work and even if it is caregiving it's about being a doctor being a nurse being a uh, being an oncologist or being you know in palliative care and one would take a lot of pride that saying that you know well i've set up this facility of pal on palliative care that would be proud uh, a matter of pride but in one's own personal life caregiving is pretty much a very thankless job